You are what you eat. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Hi, my name is Erica Kirby and I'm with the Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina Foundation. Our mission is to bridge health in healthcare. And so as we talk about the role of nutrition and public health today, it's very much in keeping with what we are trying to accomplish within the foundation to improve the lives of all South Carolinians, particularly the economically disadvantaged. I happen to be a registered dietitian, and I've been so for 20 plus years. I've worked in various settings, everything from clinical to the state's health department, in academia, and now I am with the foundation trying to support programs and projects to really help increase a high quality nutritional diet of all of South Carolinians. So our focus is really trying to get on prevention of chronic diseases through high quality diet, healthy eating, but then also coupled with that would be physical activity and tobacco use. We see the three of those as the key risk factors for all chronic diseases. But today I will particularly use this video to introduce the notion of why nutrition is important for the practice of public health. The reality is that there is a gap in Americans and their consumption or having a high quality nutritional diet. And this can lead to a myriad of chronic diseases. We see high rates of diabetes. We see high rates of uncontrolled hypertension. We see high rates of cardiovascular disease. Two out of every three adults are either overweight or obese and one third of our children are overweight or obese. And so as we look at these chronic conditions, we really have to start changing the paradigm of how can we support healthier choices at an earlier age such that our children can lead a healthier life for many, many years to come. So as we also look at the implications of these chronic diseases, not only in terms of our health status, we also have to recognize the implications for our healthcare system. So you may have thought, well, what I eat is my own business, and to some degree, certainly that's true, but it also has implications for the world around us, the systems around us, and the organizations that employ us. So as we look at um, what do we do about this, um, research has shown, and the re national recommendations certainly give us the guidance to look at a comprehensive approach such that we are layering together changes, policy changes, practice changes in different settings to include childcare, school, work sites, healthcare system, the places of worship, and even our larger community. But then coupling that with educational initiatives, parent engagement, being able to provide data to help influence and inform practice change. So this comprehensive approach is really the answer, and it, it is what will ultimately be the best formula for success in terms of improving nutrition and improving healthy eating in an effort to eat smart, as we say. So what exactly could this look like? Well, if we start from the very beginning, let's look at a pregnant female. So she is with a baby in her womb and that child, that infant, that baby is receiving all of those nutrients from the mom. Well, what is the mom's diet like? Has the mom been receiving adequate prenatal care? Did the mom take folic acid even before she knew she was pregnant? And so all of these influences the child's health, the nutritional status of when that baby is born, and certainly we can do things to promote breastfeeding as we know that breast milk is nature's best food. The first two years of life for an infant are critically important to establish a strong foundation for the rest of that child's life. So that's why we certainly look at how we can establish and formulate and introduce children to a high quality variety of foods that get them excited about wanting to maintain a healthy lifestyle choices and healthy high quality foods for many, many years to come. Well, as that child gets older and turns into a teenager or goes to childcare and to school, 
what are the choices and what are the factors and influencers to that individual's consumption. And this is where federal policy can come into play. This is where state level decision make, making can come into play in terms of the types of foods that that child is exposed to. Um, the National School Lunch Program was initially started with one goal in mind, but over the years we've seen some unintended consequences. And so in the last few years, there's been a push to improve the quality of school meals and school food service operations across the nation. In many cases, a child, a low income child, can receive up to two thirds of their daily caloric intake from the school setting. This is a critical opportunity to really influence the nutritional intake of that student. So when we look at the Fresh Fruit and Vegetable Program and the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act, all of these are federal pieces of legislation trying to create a better platform, a better environment to improve a child's consumption. And as we then look at state decision making and or the ability to make some entrepreneurial opportunities from these trends, we can look at then the nod towards know your farm or farmer, eating local, being able to provide some business opportunities, keeping foods in our local economy, which certainly help local business, but then also it provides higher quality, more nutritious foods closer to the point of consumption. So as we then move, as that child gets older and looks at the community around it, then are they seeing row upon row a fast food operation or franchise? Or do they see really an absence of any location to purchase healthy foods? Are they, do they have to consume foods from a convenience store? And these food deserts that we know where there's really a, a complete lack of access to healthy foods is a critical issue that we are recognizing more and more. And it goes to this paradox between food insecurity and obesity. So again, just another opportunity for you as public health professionals to really look around and see how you can make change and be a champion and be a catalyst for making the healthier choice the easier choice. So my challenge to you is how can you look at your environment and really start to notice what influences what you consume. And if you start to make that observation, then start to critically think about how you can then in turn make changes and have some influence that can benefit others.